Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate General Gettysburg, the first of the Ultimate General series, and this is part 5, I believe it is, of my Let's Play of the Confederate side, and playing with the highest difficulty, a balanced highest difficulty match uh, against the AI. Uh, we're playing through the whole Battle of Gettysburg, which is sort of this dynamic campaign of various scenarios that have carryover casualties and results. And over the last couple of battles, we've been trying to take Cemetery Hill. We finally did that in the very last fight, and we did it at immense cost. So we're now moving into July 3rd, the final day of the Battle of Gettysburg. We've taken Cemetery Hill. The fighting has swung south of the town of Gettysburg. And in this next battle, the Federals outnumber us very, very substantially, frankly. Uh, and we're going to be trying to drive and take one more objective, pushing the Federal troops further south and also while hanging on to Cemetery Hill. We'll see if we're able to do that or not. The Federals, again, outnumber us very heavily. And it seems to me like in open stand-up field fighting, the Federal troops are actually better in terms of, of inflicting casualties on us than than us on them and I haven't been able to use my artillery effectively yet because apparently I'm not very good at using artillery in this game um, so we'll see how this all plays out my uh, confidence level is low but this was taken from a live stream from a few days ago so we'll see how this all plays out uh, with that being said I'll go ahead and turn myself over to myself and uh, catch you guys at the end uh, crammed into the south of Gettysburg okay Sir, the fighting is moving toward the field south of Gettysburg. We're driving the Yankees back, but they're fighting the whole way. All three of our infantry corps are making the push, and we're expecting Pickett's division to come reinforce us. The enemy still holds two major ridges, and the outcome of this engagement is uncertain. It may pay to be cautious and advance slowly, but we can't afford to waste time. We wish you luck, General. Well, that's encouraging. The Federals have 24,000 soldiers, so they outnumber us by almost two to one. We've got 5,000 reinforcements coming up, but we've got a huge swath of ground to cover. Um, we're moving south of Gettysburg. It looks like the objective that we're going to start with is, I assume, Cemetery Hill. And then it's going to swing the whole map westward back towards Seminary Ridge uh, and, and the positions there. This is going to be a tough one. Um, go ahead and fight. I'll zoom out here for a second so you can see here this is I assume seminary ridge or cemetery ridge this is maybe not oh this is cemetery ridge so this is like the stone wall oh god they want you can just advance up north and crush us the uh second core is on Field here, and their fifth corps, both relatively fresh, and the third corps, which hasn't even engaged yet. I mean, I don't see the point in advancing. That's the thing. It's like this battle has just been such a bloodbath. I don't, I don't understand how we can possibly hang on. I also don't understand why condition doesn't increase. If you haven't engaged. This is assuming everything went over, like we went overnight. And why the hell? I don't know. Um. Yeah, I don't even know what I'm going to attack. Let alone attack with. Got the uh, altitude or topography turned on here. You can see the map and what it looks like from an elevation perspective. Let's see what the Yankees do. If I was them, I would just use the 5th Corps advance directly on the objective. Pickett's division is arriving. Here's the thing, though. From a Confederate perspective, the only thing that matters is this one objective. So the Federals should advance on it, right? That's where they should attack. Pickett's divisions are coming in fresh. I'll see our break. Gonna be on the flank of that artillery of ours. 
We'll sprint Kemper and Garnett forward. Armistead will form up on the floor. Meanwhile, we're bringing reserves forward here to hold the objective, but I, I don't think we'll manage. This ground is just too open. I don't have good enough cover, I don't think. Our best hope is that they're just going to advance kind of on the flank of a lot of our artillery, so we might be able to devastate some of those troops. Okay, let's not run you anymore. Instead, fire into the flank of the Excelsiors. Wilcox, move up there. Perry, move up here. Get on top of this hill. We'll have the high ground. Ward's brigade is going to kind of be in the open. A lot of artillery piling up on it. So Ward's brigade's in, in a tricky spot. Uh, Armistead can turn south to face Carr. Kemper can engage the Excelsior direct on. And they're charging directly up that hill. It's already retreating. Alright, that's not as concerning then. Uh, Kershaw's already pulling. Yeah, I don't see any way that we hold this objective. Trying to bring some reserves over here. Again. Run Mahone, who's pretty fresh. Just they've got a whole fresh core that can line up on that objective and try and crush it. Part of me wonders if it makes more sense to go for the objective toward the west here where the third core is. Flank's going to be awfully exposed. Our artillery all along here is firing in. Looks like most of our artillery is actually in action here. And that makes sense because this is a much more open battlefield. Uzi, you're going to have the flank. Alright, we'll see how this all plays out. Ford's brigade was driven back largely by artillery, I think. Celsius are firing on some of our artillery, so they did sort of shatter one of our batteries here. If we can stack up on their flank a bit, we might be able to reverse this advance by the third core here and maybe press in on the objective. Shift. This artillery is all still firing here, so I've got a relatively strong position, I think. Excelsiors are in some decent cover a little bit gonna slow things down. I think our troops are, in, are on the high ground based on what I'm looking at. That'll certainly help. Cars Brigade's a little bit too far away to support the Excelsior's flank. Of course our artillery I think is taking direct fire from the enemy so that's a challenge. You can see they're really stacking up some blue infantry here against our objective over this direction, but our artillery, at least for the moment, is, uh, is effectively hurting them. They are advancing largely across the open. Got well-sighted batteries here to deal them a bit a bit of punishment. Cells. Yeah, these batteries are doing good work. Most of them, anyway. Some of them are not firing anymore. Their fields of fire maybe have been blocked by Wilcox's brigade. Trying to wear down the Excelsior Brigade, Graham, and kind of just push in on the enemy. We'll see 
how well we can do that. They're definitely pressing us back a bit toward the objective. But I think they're cramming too many of their troops together. This point down here. Artillery needs to get in closer. Some of these batteries are kind of hung out to hung out to dry a bit. Hold your position. Guns. Some of them aren't shooting. Some of them are. Hard to tell. Most of them were in action early. Now it seems like a bunch of them aren't. Graham's brigade just driven back here. Trobard's brigade's coming up here. This is almost a mini Fredericksburg. Brigade after brigade stacked front to back. With their flanks exposed advancing across the open ground are being hit with masses of infantry and artillery fire here. Celsius Brigade's losing pretty badly. Pickett's division is chewing it up pretty effectively. Ram just driven back. Now it's on Trobard. Well, they are continuing to press in on the objective over here. We don't have as much artillery support. This is mostly an infantry fight. I don't like our odds. Wow, this battery's inflicted a thousand casualties. But those guys earn their paycheck. Alright, Trobard being driven back, I think. Just Vance Wilcock here on the flank. Alright, Trobard's thrown back, Grant is thrown back, Wilcox is advancing a little bit. Harry? Stop running. Follow these guys. Armistead is going against Carr. Carr has a little bit of high ground. Armistead has better cover, I think. Trying to... It's a bit... His right flank is in as good a shape... Is not in as good a shape. Can't imagine we hold out here against the 5th Corps in action. Alright, Wilcox just drove back Graham. Kemper and Garnett focusing on the Excelsiors. Nice volleys there from Wilcox. Closing in on the objective. Losing some casualties. Then close to a lot of Federal artillery. Not a comfortable position to be in. Yeah, and his morale's not very high either. I don't know who you're volleying, but do some effect. Do something. Damn it, Garnet was checked. Garnet had to fall back. I 
going to bring Thomas up here. Wilcox also driven back. Look at all those blue bellies. Okay. This battery has inflicted 400 casualties. Shoot. Battle delayed. No clear end to this fight. It looks so tempting and easy, but Wilcox isn't strong enough to do it by himself. You guys have good enough condition to charge, but they don't have good enough... Morale. Proval. So this line of artillery really helped us. Try and advance Wilcox again here with a little bit of time. It is delayed. I think favors the Federals more than us. You can see here on the right flank, they're pushing in real close to that objective. Like, why do I have to order them to fire? Why don't they just do it? Gotta shift a little bit, I guess, but you'd think they could do it. Alright, move that artillery up a bit. Guns over here, too. Harry, your morale's recovered a bit, right? You can come forward. That. Her. Thomas. Everybody advance a bit. Armistead's morale's 100%. He's on a one-on-one -on -one engagement with Carr, whose brigade was bigger than his own. This all started. God, 1,600 men. Wilcox trying to advance. Girls are pushing us off this objective slowly but surely. Probably will occur before the delayed battle ends. There's just too many of them, sir. There's just too many. Ox. I'm not sure what he's doing. It's hanging in there a little bit. Ran Perry Ford directly into devastating fire. At least he took a round of canister that probably would have gone at Wilcox otherwise. Okay. That's pulling back again. Armistead charge car. Kemper. Yes, finish off this battery and you can advance a little bit more. That are melting. Melting away. Artillery is all pretty much gone here. Why don't you all fire at a uh, reading? Or are you winning? I can't really tell. Alright. That volley caused Ward to fall back. Put another volley into him there. Cause him to retreat a bit more.
All right. How's that objective not theirs yet? Up. Oh, it's changing. Matera Ridge is changing back to the Federals, and there's not a damn thing I can do about it. I can rush Posey in, but that probably isn't enough. I don't know if his troops count or not yet. Well, they just retreated. Posey's men might stop the bleeding for like 30 seconds. It's shifting though, ever so slowly. Day's brigade was driven back. That's 300 fewer men on the objective point. I think Posey was already in the sort of calculation. Not really sure. Those guys look like they're routed for good. Wright's Brigade, interestingly enough, has 100% morale. Drove back Smith's Brigade, or what's left of it. Max, why are you just sitting there taking fire? Why don't you shoot? Armistead drove those feds back. That objective has to have turned to the Federals. Whatever we did just bought us a little bit of time, I guess. But it's basically almost blue. Lost Cemetery Hill. So all of that blood and sweat that we expended trying to take Cemetery Hill in the first place is just wasted as we, uh, we lost the hill, folks. Rest of our troops are all running like cowards. This is gonna be a ugly end to a bloody ass battle. We have left eight thousand soldiers. The Federals only have fourteen thousand. I mean, we've. I think they might have actually lost more men than us in this fight. I'm not really sure, but it seems to be the gist of thing. Just didn't have enough manpower to hang on to the hill. We've still got some troops in the area fighting. Artillery, this is the first battle I think that I used artillery effectively, and that's largely because I had this great ridge line over here that the AI started my artillery pieces up on. I was largely just able to leverage that. I don't know if there's another fight or not. I mean, we still have Culp's Hill, right? So we lost Cemetery Hill, we still have Culp's Hill. I don't think there's any chance of. What? Just hold your frickin' ground. Get all your men killed? It's one thing is I feel like I fight the AI more in this game than, or my, my friendly AI that is. I feel like I fight that more in this game than I do in Ultimate General Civil War. Well, they've definitely, I think, made some enhancements. The AI a bit better. Just your friendly AI in terms of competently making sure troops don't walk mindlessly into volley fire because you're an idiot like myself often is. Damn, this was a really bad defensive terrain. Like, we didn't... The objective over there, there was really no good ridge or hill or terrain feature to anchor ourselves on. I understand why the battle would be delayed if you have troops within certain vicinity of an objective. It obviously doesn't delay it if you've taken all the objectives. But to me, it seems odd that you always do the maximum delay in this game when uh, a lot of times, you know, the the hill or objective has been taken or seized or whatnot, and you just keep playing. I guess they were still securing the hill. We lost the hill, but it was in neutral hands until just now. So maybe that was a valid complaint on my end. Thirty. I mean, my artillery. Some of these batteries, you know, three hundred did really well. Four hundred and sixty. 
a single loss. Yeah, some of these batteries really did bloody the enemy. Of course, most of my own brigades lost substantially more men than they inflicted. Armistead seems to be the one exception. My infantry sucks. The weird thing is my artillery seems to be good. Yeah, battle's about to end. Could just end it now. I don't know if there's like a concede, concede without surrendering. So it seems that the battle will end in a few minutes. Both armies are exhausted and need to resupply. Well, one army more than the other. See, like Arma said here, you should be firing volleys, not waiting for me to issue an order to you to fire volley. Could not have been necessary. All right, here we go. Battle, major defeat. We lost, the enemy lost about 10,000 men. We lost just a little bit less than that, so 9,500 versus 9,800. Go to the order of the battle that leaves us with 27,000 troops left. The Federals have 53,000, so they now outnumber us more than 2 to 1. Um, the Battle of Gettysburg has ended. Outcome tactical defeat versus the balanced AI. The Union ended with 57,000 victory points. We had 35,000. We lost 43,000 men. They lost 34,000. This is an ex unacceptable result. The Ar proud Army of Northern Virginia has failed to gain a tactical advantage or inflict significant casualties to the enemy under your lead. You need to improve your strategy and tactics or else we'll be forced to withdraw home badly beaten. Well, if we lost three-fourths of our army, um, basically, well, not three-fourths, but 43,000. The Confederates, at least historically, had about 75,000 men. So we lost more than half our army. The Federals lost about a, th a little bit more than a third of their army. And remember, the Federals are more easily able to replace their losses than we are. So all told, definitely a disaster for us. Uh, and, uh, not the result we were hoping for. Um, I have, this is a very different game than Ultimate General Civil War, and I have not played this since it was in early access, so I apologize if this was a bit of a muddle to watch. Um, but yeah, I need to use terrain more effectively. I need to not group all my troops up all that the way I did. I'm thinking it might be more interesting to play as the Union. I had originally played as the Confederates because I didn't, you know, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't able to crush myself uh, to crush the enemy on day one and not be able to recover. But at the end of the day, while I still had sufficient forces through two days to be able to fight fight interesting battles, um, you know, at the end of the day, I've been of a player as I probably need to be to play on the hardest difficulty, which I was playing. It's balanced AI, but it is the most difficult level of AI. Uh, sort of modest aggression, modest caution, and the most challenging or, or strong AI. So I think what I'll do next time around is I'll play as the Union, and we'll see if we can do a little bit better being on the defensive than being on the offensive. This battle, you could see, we did okay on the defensive for the most part. We fought relatively even in terms of casualties uh, to the enemy, and we used those ridge lines effectively. So maybe we'll see what happens next time around playing as the U. All right, everybody, that did it for a rather disastrous series of Ultimate General Gettysburg as the Confederacy. I lost the Confederate Army, frankly, and the Civil War is probably lost for the Confederacy. So I think what we'll do next time around, as I kind of mentioned here, is we'll play we'll play Ultimate General one more time, uh, Gettysburg, and we'll play it from the Union side with a similar level of difficulty and see if we're able to do a better job when we're on the defensive. But that will be for another time. Until then, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.